This is Jeff with the Backyard Birds channel, and this video focuses on the history and biodiversity of a historic cemetery. Let's learn about the history, the people, and the biodiversity of the Ritchie Cemetery. The 3.7 acre cemetery is located at Southwest 27th Street and Southwest Boswell Avenue in Topeka, Kansas. The Ritchie Cemetery was named after Colonel John Ritchie, an early settler, free stater, and abolitionist who came to Topeka from Indiana. His first wife, Mary Jane, and two of his children, Mary and Elizabeth, were buried at the site. They were later reinterred at the Topeka Cemetery after he died in 1887. Beginning in the 1880s, most of the burials were of African Americans. Many were part of the exodus from the South after Reconstruction following the Civil War. Of the known burials, 91% are African American. Many lived in the Tennessee town neighborhood of Central Topeka. In January of 2023, the cemetery was added to the National Register of Historic Places. Besides being a respected burial site, it is also a haven for biological diversity. It retains much of the habitat that was found on the site at the time of settlement. The first burials occurred in 1859. They were Carolyn and Hinckley Garrison, children of Isaac and Hephzibah Garrison, who had come to Kansas Territory from Indiana. The last burial, Earl W. Huggins, occurred in 1941. He, along with his parents and three brothers and one sister, are buried at the cemetery. As of January 2021, 302 burials have been documented at Ritchie Cemetery. Unlike most cemeteries in Topeka, Ritchie Cemetery was never formally managed and no formal burial records exist. The majority of burial information was gleaned from undertaker records, Topeka City Clerk death records, and newspaper obituaries. But all of these records are incomplete. Death and burial information is lacking or inaccessible for some periods of time. Most undertaker records no longer exist, and not everyone who died in Topeka was recorded in the Topeka City Clerk death registry, or their burial location was not recorded. And not everyone who died had an obituary, or if there was an obituary, it may not have the burial location. And Kansas death certificates are only accessible to persons that meet eligibility requirements. Furthermore, most of the burials were in unmarked graves. Therefore, we just don't know everyone who is buried at the cemetery. New burials have been prohibited since the city of Topeka declared the cemetery abandoned and took control of the site in 1962. It is not your typical cemetery filled with grave markers. There are fewer than 10 markers. The cemetery provides an upland habitat that is largely wooded, although it also features a sizable clearing that is mowed. The cemetery land has been minimally maintained through the years and at times neglected. Because of the lack of formal maintenance from the time of its establishment, a variety of plants, animals, and fungus are still found at the site. As of March 2024, over 800 species of plants, animals, and fungi have been identified on the biodiversity platform iNaturalist. Unfortunately, there are invasive plant species found at the cemetery that threaten the existence of the native flora. But volunteers are removing the non-native threats, such as Amur bush honeysuckle and winter creeper. A slideshow of some of the diversity can be seen at the end of this video. You can learn more about the cemetery with the following resources. Jan Johnson and Jeff Hansen created a website called RitchieCemetery.com to document the people, the place, and the biological diversity of the cemetery. Join the Facebook group Ritchie Cemetery Topeka for informal discussions of the place. A Ritchie Cemetery family tree exists on Ancestry.com and includes family members with relatives buried at the cemetery. 
It can be accessed at most libraries if you are not a paying member of Ancestry.com. If you are interested in the cemetery's biodiversity, visit inaturalist.org and go to the project titled Ritchie Cemetery in Topeka, Kansas. Memorials have been created on the Find a Grave website for those buried at the cemetery. The video description has links to these resources. Do you have a question? Leave a comment. If you know someone who would be interested in this video, share it with them. The rest of the video contains images of the biodiversity found at the cemetery. The images represent a very small subset of this biodiversity. To see all of the biodiversity, visit the project on inaturalist.org. Hi, it's Jeff. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Click on the bell to be the first to know about my new videos. Go a step further and join me on Patreon to support my effort to bring you the content that you desire. You can watch more of my videos to learn about nature.